Welcome back guys. It's your boy JB in a place to be and today's video is going to be concerning a fiber optic enclosure that was completed by a contractor. Um, additional work had to be done and I thought this guy did a bang up job and I wanted to share uh, the awesomeness with you. All right, so just a bit of prep work here. Let's look at the case that we're going to be looking at, right? And what we're going to be looking at is the FOSC 600. It is the fiber optic splice enclosure 600 series. It is one of the larger enclosures that Comscope sells, right? That they produce. It's able to house uh, 16 separate cable ports, depending on its orientation and how you lay it out. Um, it's able to uh, accommodate uh, 1,728 uh, fibers. That would be bare fibers, mind you. And it really depends on whether it's ribbon splice or single splice. One of the standout features outside of the large capacity that this enclosure has is the locking mechanism, right? How do we secure the top to the bottom? A lot of the enclosures I've shown you so far are in two pieces and they're secured by a large C-clamp right a large um, bracket so to speak in this particular case what we have are over center latches that secure the top of the enclosure to the bottom to the base right so those are the things that we have to look at right for the most part um, they all have similar features they all have gel seals whether it be an o-ring or actual seal technology um, they all have trays, baskets, most have baskets, but they all basically serve the same purpose, to house your splices. All right, so just a, just a overview here. We see that the lid's off. It's over there. Uh, we can see that uh, we got a nice loop here. There's spare fiber there. Um, looks very neat. We can see that there's braided transport tube here. Me personally, I wouldn't use braided transport tube. We'll go in that. We'll go into that in the future, uh, shortly. Uh, we can see that the same thing is done here, and we also notice that the tech even took that time to label his uh, splices, put labels on his heat shrink. We would hope that those correspond to the actual ribbons that were used, right? The basket looks clean. Uh, a few transport tubes, um, with the exception of this random uh, heat shrink. Everything else look, everything else looked just perfect, man. We see that the transport, the braided transports, going all the way to the uh, inlet as well as the outlet here. He labeled it north and south. Always think about the guy that's going to come behind you. Uh, make things simple as best you can, right? So things look good thus far. <laughs> okay, we see the over latch here. Very nice. Like I said, it's a brand new case. I don't know why I'm flipping it over, but it's a good job so far. All right, so right about now, um, the case looks great. This is a trunk case, right? There's not too many fibers that are supposed to be coming in or out of the case, or so we're led to believe, right? You never know how an enclosure is going to be used in the future. So you want to take those precautions, right? The tech routed uh, plenty of the fiber from the basket up to the trays themselves. That's why these trays are built like that, and that's a common practice, right? Some technicians like to leave at least one loop in the basket. Other technicians put it all in the trays, but it really depends on how it's going to be used. So just a bit of backstory here, uh, why I'm in this enclosure to begin with, yes, that is uh, jizz. <laughs> it's a bit of uh, gel that's there. But the reason why we're doing this is because we had a hit line here, right? What you'll see down at the bottom here is a 432, which is joining two uh, 360 fibers. We can see a four port uh, gel cap here, gel seal cap here, block seal. We can see that some of the original equipment was used, uh, that being that yellow butt plug there. Typical what you find in most cases here, the uh, hose clamps and the brackets there. But another, another uh, nice point here is if we can, there, right there, that green 
uh, wire that's there. That green wire is a grounding wire. It's gonna serve to join the two fibers together electrically, right? It's clamped to the armor of the fiber of one. It attaches to a metal bracket, a metal plate at the bottom, and then it's joined to the other fiber as well, the armor of the other fiber. This is great. Uh, it, it, it's fantastic, especially when it comes to uh, locating, right? Uh, electrically, uh, to a locator, it would look like this is one continuous fiber. Thus, it would give us accurate locates, right? That's always nice. All right, so this is just a bit of an experiment I wanted to share with the rest of you guys. Right here, we have the internals of a com scope enclosure. We see the corrugated tube here, the spiral tube, as well as the typical transport tube. Okay, so if we look at it, it's basically all sealed. Nothing's gonna get at it. But if we look at the corrugated tube here, it's spiral, right? Uh, the fiber does have an opportunity to uh, escape the tubing, escape the transport tube, per se, right? And we have some spare ribbon fiber I just happen to have laying around, right? And it's all intact. Okay, so we can see here, I got the transport tube taped down to simulate uh, running the fiber up from the basket to the tray. And we're gonna use this ribbon splice to just simulate that, right? It goes up very nice, very nice, in and out. So let's try it with the corrugated tube, the spiral tube. Okay, we got that all taped down as well. Let's try to fish that through. Okay, it's getting jammed up. And it comes out. All right, that's never good. Uh, if you can imagine, what if there were multiple fibers going through the same transport tube? There'd be an issue. Yeah, the chance of uh, damaging a, a fiber that's already in the tray is likely, you know, because you would try to force it through. Look at that. We didn't get that with the other one. All right, so just for kicks, let's see what it would look like if it was just one, uh, f one single fiber. So we chose the yellow. It's great contrast against black. And we see it goes through nicely, right? And these narrow transport tubes, you don't want too many going through there. Maybe about two, three ribbons at most. Um, maybe about 12 bare fiber. But here, let's try to force it through this corrugated tube, this spiral tube. And it comes out, came right out. That's never a good thing. Imagine if it were more than one. What do you think about this? All right, leave a comment. <laughs> All right, so we can see a tray cover that is blank, right? It's totally blank. This one's blank, and the next one will be blank. Uh, this is a missed opportunity. Same way the guy wrote on the basket here. Uh, don't miss your chance to uh, convey information to the tech who's going to come behind you. Anything, any additional information that you can add to the enclosure will uh, reduce the amount of confusion in the future. You may uh, visit that same case and be completely oblivious to the modifications that you had to make or even some other technician made because they didn't write anything down. Documentation is very important, guys. All right, so guys, now that uh, we had a look at the case, the case looks very much satisfactory. Bang up job done here. Um, small things, small issues, nothing uh, too detrimental. But uh, now it's time to check the quality of the fiber that was run. And to do that, we would basically shoot each individual fiber. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot a few of these fibers to see if they're, um, 
to see if they're well, man, to see if they're good quality, right? Sadly, uh, you can check this stuff at the factory, but as it's being pulled, there is severe trauma that's done to the fiber. And you hope that it's not too severe where it can still be used, still be salvaged. Maybe there's good ribbons, but, um, you know, there's always that chance. So check whenever you can. So here, um, what I opted to use was to use this jumper that I have from this wall mount. Um, I like to save a lot of my stuff. And I was gonna mount a bear fiber to one of the uh, 900 size uh, fibers inside of this jumper, right? So here it is, here's the layout, right? We got bear fiber, <laughs> we got a single fiber uh, splice to this 900. We got a good splice here. It's going over into the OTDR and we're gonna shoot it. Right? Turning off our launch kits. Launch kits. Gonna set the distance, set the pulse width, and set the duration as we would always do. And we're gonna run our test. Five seconds, right? I chose five seconds because I have quite a few fibers to shoot and I don't want to spend all day out here. But we can see that there's a pass and this thing looks perfect. Not completely perfect, but it's within spec. Very nice. Decent loss. I wouldn't say decent loss, I'd say predicted loss. It's within the parameters that we were expecting it to be. Good job. All right, guys, so the, the only problem that we found with the enclosure was that this heat shrink says ribbon six. It's been labeled six, right? And we like to have trust amongst um, phantom splicers, right? Guys, you'll never even see. But if we look at the actual ribbon itself, it's labeled 18, right? So if we were going off just splices, if we were going off just uh, what's written on the heat shrink, um, there's a problem here, right? And it's a good thing we recheck our work, right? Always check, always audit. Um, you know, measure twice, cut once, right? All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. Um, I hope you found a few pointers. I hope you found this thing interesting as well as informative. Um, all in all, this enclosure was immaculately done. I am surprised at the level of professionalism that this contractor uh, put on display for us to critique, right? Um, but what do you think, right? Go ahead and leave comments, like, share, subscribe, share your experience, how you would have done it differently. And um, I'll catch you on the next one. All right, you guys take care and peace. I'm out.